will not do what you think you can't do. And the issue that you know has to do with use and disuse. And aging is one of the serious problems of disuse. When we tell people, okay, you're too old, stop doing this. People say, okay, I'm going to retire. I, my father worked six and a half days a week. He retired and he died within a year. Why? And most people in some level are involved with sickness and illness after they retire. Why? Because what are you telling your body? What's your belief? You are finished. You are finished. And the significance is this. When we start to pretend we're finished, we stop doing things. When we stop doing things, the body will start to resorb the structures. Things like osteoporosis. Why do so many people have osteoporosis at that age, that older age? Well, how many of those people, for the greatest exercise, turn the television on and off? <laughs> if you sit down and you do not exercise, then the system will take itself apart. You don't have to be old for this to occur. I could have a 10-year-old kid with a broken arm, and when I put a cast on that kid's arm, and I come back six weeks later and take the cast off and compare the muscles, there's going to be half the amount of muscle in the arm. And the bone density is going to be greatly reduced, showing osteoporosis, if that was what your assessment was. And the bottom line is the kid doesn't have osteoporosis. What's the function? He's not using it. And just recently, it has been repeated several times now, the primary cause or contributing factor of Alzheimer's, lack of use of the brain. That when people separate, and as they get older, stop communicating, this is one of the main contributors to dementia. The fact that when you stop using your brain and start turning it off because I'm finished, the brain, just like the muscles in the arm, will start to remove the cells because the intelligence of the system is so superb, it says efficiency is the basis of life. We don't, as humans, we, we don't know nothing about efficiency. I'll tell you that right now. Cells do. <laughs> cells know that if a structure is not being used, they will not support it. And the relevance about it is this. The vitality of these women is the vitality of their belief system, the fact that they know they're not finished and that, that keeps them alive and it keeps them young. And there are people out here in the audience that know there are some people out here that are working past their retirement age and they're healthier and happier for the process. So again, the end of this first part, this is the understanding. You are machines made out of proteins. The proteins move in response to the signals. The signals are controlled by the membrane, which reads the signals and then adjusts the body by sending signals to the body to respond to the environment. That the environmental signals are perceptions by definition. You saw it. Awareness of the environment through physical sensation is perception. But then, as we also saw, perception may not be accurate. And when a perception is not accurate, then it's really a belief more than a perception. And the bottom line is this. The conclusion is that beliefs run the genes. And we know this in many cases, especially people that have terminal cancer. The only ones that can really get out of that pronouncement of death are the people who do what? change their entire belief system and say, I'm not buying that story. I'm out of here. I'm going out to live my life. And when they do, they take control of their life. And guess what? They start to manifest a remission and more health through the process. So the bottom line is, the truth is you are not genetically controlled, but you're controlled by your perceptions. Now, when I extend this in the next half, what I'm going to extend on and talk about is simply this. The signals that are in the environment are not just physical signals as materialistic Newtonian biologists believe. That energy is equally valuable in eliciting biological systems, and I'll demonstrate that, as well as, as molecules. I will also start to talk about the role of parents in conscious parenting because the belief of the parents is now recognized to select the genes in the fetus. That if you were a parent or you were once a baby, then that would be very important to you for the following reason. It reveals that we were, the life that we express today was very, very much shaped by the belief of our parents. And I'll talk about that. And then the most important part, how belief can rewrite your genes. And I will show you the science of that when we come back from the short break. Thank you very much.